This channel and the content on it was created for adults only, 18 plus. We don't promote or condone any illegal activity or the use of any illegal substance. This was created for informational and educational purpose only. This channel and the content Some stash play to feed my kids. <laughs> Fucking nice. Yeah. Happy, happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. I, I don't. I don't know why I yelled. I'm sorry. <laughs> it just gets so excited. There she is. She's not muted anymore. <laughs> the intro just I'm gets me so muted. jammed up. So, how's everybody's week been? It's been a week. I was just about to say it's been a week. Oh. So how's everybody's week Friday. Been? It's been a week. I can't believe it's not already Friday. That's how long this week has been. <laughs> grr, grr, grr. That's okay. We're gonna we're, gonna, we're gonna make Wednesday our new Friday. <laughs> Hell yeah, starting tonight. That's right. That's right. So yes. See, I'm even blinged so we, out. I'm wearing my gonna... Friday night bling. Oh hell yeah! So we are gonna and have uh, I even Mr. Deuce had on tonight. My toque on today, my Grody oh, Garden toque, oh, nice. but I just took it off before the show. <laughs> so yeah, we are gonna have Deuce anymore. on tonight, but um, mm -hmm. he uh, he got called into work. Yep, and real life took over. He, yeah. So we found that out on Monday and and Bunny came to the rescue with, with Mr. Milo and uh oh, I'm so excited. Show. We have a good yeah, show. So excited. am I. Yeah, I've been chatting really with them for fun. so long. It's nice to actually be able to have a conversation, you know, and, and to be able to talk because it's just, just so much better. Yeah. Yeah, we I had our first conversation. Time. Him and I had our first conversation uh not last night, the night before. So he's a super cool dude. I'm excited yeah, to uh, nice. dig a little deeper. And uh, and guess what? It's daytime where he's at too. Because he's in my yes. time zone. Oh, I'm that's so true. excited. That's true. <laughs> it's very we'll rare. Have, time zone. Yeah, we're even. We have two different, two that are on the same and the other two that are on the same. Oh, <laughs> He's that doesn't happen. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the beast. The beef oh. is back. Yes, I knew. I knew if I, I if I wore the bling, I knew it would come out in me. I knew it. <laughs> I know it. We're gonna have to get some Tupac <laughs> and Biggie playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hello, everyone. Welcome. All right. Enough, enough of our shenanigans. Thank you, everybody, for joining us this evening. Shall we, shall we get our guest in? <laughs> Let's Absolutely. do it. All right. Welcome. Good evening. Happy Wednesday. Oh, having a little trouble hearing you. Thanks for having me on. Oh, no problem. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for, for joining us this evening. It's going to be fun to get to know you. It is. I know uh, we, we definitely have a lot of questions for you. Okay, where do you want to start? Um, how about introducing yourself? Okay. Nickname is my little girl, but that's just my nickname. Um, my first name's my first name's Mike, and there were so many Mikes when I was in high school that they always asked if it went by another name. And one of my best friends heard that term Milo because it's my dad's second name, and thought it sounded funny, and it stuck for the next fifty-five years. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, yeah, that's awesome! I'm still nice. packing that same monitor around. And then when, <laughs> I into, when I got into just the take it and run with it, <laughs> I, I kind of like my little girl, so that's the first logo. It's got a good so, ring to it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we, I think when you lean back, we're having trouble hearing you. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll try again. <laughs> my laptop and my, not my uh not my phone so i can actually see a bit more of what's going on yeah oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's pretty too. small on the on the phone screen so it's yeah. so yeah. like i was saying I've, I've been laid out for the last three weeks with a bad back and i've mm. had a bad back most of my life part of the reason i got involved in with cannabis was for pain control pain management. and uh that's great this time when I threw, you know, I, I'm 65 years old, but I'm not a lazy guy and I'm on acreage and, you know, I'm a hard working guy and I'll push it too much sometimes. And and I always know it when I get up in the morning, I know I've pushed it too much and I, and yep. I pay. Week, 10 days, this time around, nothing. I got out of bed. I didn't do. Oh, anything. no. You and know you're sleeping. getting old when. <laughs> 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 it's funny i was just i was just saying to a couple of the younger guys that i work with today i was like you know you know how i know i'm getting old is when i can hurt myself in my sleep when i go to bed yeah. fine and i wake up and my back hurts because i've i've tweaked myself in my sleep or something I was like, that's, that's how i know i'm i'm getting up there <laughs> five trips to the chiropractor four oh, trips wow. to physiotherapy two trips to the acupuncturist Wow. Three weeks and I'm just about 75% now. Oh, I, wow. I, have old. I have I have animals on the farm. I have my groves to take care of. My place is yeah. up for sale. So I've got a zillion things going on. That, Did that you say your crows? Sorry? Did you say crows? You have your crows oh, to take? My, my crows. Oh, grow. I was like, <laughs> oh, let's talk about your crows, sir. <laughs> I do have ravens on the property, but I don't raise them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you've been All growing right. for how long? Over 50 years. I'm oh, 65 wow. now, and I probably started my first grows when I was about 14 or 15. You know, a oh, wow. couple of plants in the backyard, you know, in the back bedroom that my dad instantly got rid of pushed them off to, you know, the little closet clothes and all the rest of that to it getting a little bigger and a little better to when I bought my first house, I actually put one in the basement and drove my wife nuts because it lifted up all the floors in the room above it because of the moisture. Right. So, you know, it was all heavy on yeah. the learning curve. And then, um, no. I was lucky enough to run into a master grower, a true master grower. Lots of guys call themselves. I would never have called myself a master grower, but he, in my mind, is a true master grower. 
And he liked me and he took me under his wing and he brought me into the commercial industry and virtually taught me 90% of what I know now, right? And wow. he, he showed me how to grow every different bucket systems, hydro systems, rock wool, lava rock, cocoa, you name it. He's done it at one time or another. Nice. He, still, he still comes around, you know, I'm 65 and he's quite a bit older than me. And he still comes around every now and then. Takes, takes a look oh, that's him. awesome. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Odd. Yeah. So like calling friend right there. Yeah. yeah. That's uh mm -hmm. that's a teach a teach a man to fish right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. he, absolutely. And he, yeah, he can just to grow together. <laughs> yeah. He eventually got out of the market himself too. Right. Mm -hmm. But when the when the price of flour here tanked on the coast about five or six years ago, he told me that the writing was on the wall. Right? He said yeah. the big boys are gonna force all the little players out of it, right? That's what they want. And yeah. It's the yep. same as me. When I stopped my commercial flowering flower production, that was the best decision I ever made in my whole life. Right? Because up to that point, it was all about production, burn and burn, right? Always having the right. newest, latest, greatest. Yep. The minute I got it into the breeding and I got a chance to slow down and really start to tweak my capabilities, what I could do, and then it just took off from there. I mean, I've been. My, my some of my gear is a, I'm in Australia, I'm in New Zealand, I'm in Japan, I'm in yeah. Spain, I'm in Portugal. Like I have, I have, which is crazy. Running my gear all over the world, and you know, I, I like making a few dollars on the side, but for me, it was always to have my gear out there to know that that somebody is looking in a grow tent, right, with a big smile on their face and knowing that you know what, I I created that. Scratch. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's, you know, it's pretty, it's right from the heart right there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a whole lot more rewarding than, than getting a couple bucks for what you're doing. You know, just 100%. seeing all the countries and different places that you've got your strains to that your hard work has paid off. And I would like to help. You know, I don't yes. think I've ever not answered a question that's got asked of me. I will bend yeah. I will bend over backwards to answer a question if I can't answer it, and I can't answer every question in the world. I'll, I'll find yeah. someone who can. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, and, and that's the I, nice thing about this community. Mm -hmm. I tell new is, growers, when you make mistakes and you learn from the mistake, it's not a mistake; it's a yeah. learning experience. If you that's keep right. doing the same thing over and over and over again, those are mistakes. But if you learn, yeah, it's not a mistake; it's a learning experience. And there's yeah, a lot it's an education, is what it is. You know, so many people nowadays think that they can write it, that they can read a book, and they can watch a couple of YouTube videos, and they can become instant growers. And we all know that's that's not the way it works. It, well, yeah, they, it, it, you know, they make it look it easy, right? So they think, oh, I can, I can do this. Yeah, well, yeah, you can do it, but to do it well and with some skill you need yeah. to have some you need to have some education and some, some momentum. Out there can grow some arizona window box yeah yeah and and yeah. having the information is one thing but having the hands-on the the hands-on know-how is different as well because i know so much but then when it actually comes time to put it to work and I, and I actually have to go through the steps of it. It's that's when you really learn. Yeah. Like I don't know shit. Like yeah. a lot to learn. <laughs> so I, I have I have a good memory. It's just really short. But I'm right. focused on the notes. I write notes. Yeah. So I have journals that go back years and years. And, yeah. and those yeah. journals have helped me out so many times. I'll be having some type of issue with something, and I'll think, you know what? I went through this once before and I'll go back in my journal and take a look nine times out of 10. Yeah. I can figure it out pretty quick. Yeah. Would that be, would that be one of your number one suggestions or top 10 suggestions for a new grower then is to make sure that they write it, write everything yeah. down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You should, you should have a basic notebook and you know, you don't have to write a book. Just mm -hmm. Basics. What was the high temperature? What was the low temperature? How much did you feed that day? What was the pH? What was the parts per million? How were the plants reacting? Were they in prey mode? 
be right just the basics yeah you know, like the, the, I kind of, I kind of chuckle when I see people ask. They'll show pictures of, of plants that have a deficiency or something. <laughs> Something's not quite right. And how many people yeah. will, they'll give a one answer, like they'll just reach out, like the answer's instant. Yeah. And most of the time, it's not. There can be so many different factors coming into play. And I tell everybody, yeah. first thing I look at is the pH. What is the thank pH? you? Absolutely, I do the exact right? same thing. You can have the best nutrients in the world, it's not going to make any difference because the plant can't uptake the nutrients. Yeah, I yeah. actually had somebody tell me once that they'd like to run their pH at 7.4 to 7.6. Wow, really? Show me some pictures of your plants. So they showed me some pictures of some very droopy, very unhappy plants. So I said, Oh. I'm not trying to bust your bubble here, but I said, your pH is way too high. So I said, yeah, take your pH down to about five, six or five, eight, knowing that hopefully I can get to middle ground here and just yeah. give it three or four days and see what happens. Four days later, she's texting me. Oh, that's amazing. I can't believe the difference. <laughs> and I said, yeah. And I said, oh, you know, wow. there's so many people out there that will give that will give advice but that yeah. doesn't mean that it's good advice yeah. that's right so yeah i always tell everybody if you're gonna if you're gonna take advice from youtube or 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 anywhere make sure that you get the same type of advice from two or three people that it's running in the same direction like i'm a yeah, yeah. Water mechanic on the side and i've worked on vehicles that i've never worked on before i'll go to youtube i'll take a look at something Right? Yeah, for sure. some pretty hokey videos up, but if I watch yeah. two or three videos and they're all on the same line, I think I'm heading the right direction. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and and most of the time too, like if somebody asks me a grow question, I don't come back with an answer. I come back with like twelve questions. Yeah, because I never get before, before I ever even give an answer. I I, I want to know a lot more about what's going on and what you're doing before I can even give you an answer because. <laughs> One picture of something can be twenty-five yeah. different things. Yeah, yeah. you know. And so I always kind of chuckle when you get that one leaf on the bottom of a plant that a new grower is all worried about. Yeah, okay. you know what? Just cut it off. Gonna smoke that, and it's going to die anyhow. Just pluck it off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, what? Uh, how long ago did you actually get into breeding? I've been into the breeding for probably about four years now. Um, oh wow! It was all. It was. It was. It was kind of funny how I got into it, actually, because um, up to, up to that point, I'd always grown for for no seed. Right. I spent my whole yeah. career making sure that I didn't have seed in anything. Yeah. And here I am doing yeah. the total opposite, and <laughs> seeds. Yeah. So I was involved in in, a, in a, we called it we called it the Mac attack. And it was me and a couple of buddies of mine from Alberta and a couple other guys, one guy in Ontario. And we all got sent out seed from the one breeder in, in uh, Alberta, um, uh, Teddy Genetics, actually. And, uh, and it was just, they were just reg seeds. And so it was supposed to be a show and grow. We we're all going to sit and start at the same time. And, you know, it was a little, it was a little fun competition, right? So, you know, typical competition, a couple of guys dropped out right away. And, and the guy that was running the company got called to work. So the whole thing kind of fell to pieces. So I still had my four max. And of course, the, the leader of the pack out of the four, as soon as I altered the photo period, turned out to be a male. And it virtually ticked every box I've ever seen on what I would use to breed. Right? Oh, it wow. had size, it had smell, it had tight nodal spacing. It was a it was a virtual, I call it my map gorilla. Right? Oh. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do some breeding with this boy. So mm -hmm. I, out and I collected the pollen and then I started using the pollen on all the things that I grew commercially. So so Jeff Baba Kush, April, my runs. My UK cheese, 
all the major producers that I already had experience growing with. I crossed yeah. all those and that Mac knocked it out of the park with every one of them. Like every one of them was a, was a good strain standalone on its own. But yeah. after I added the Max, like that Mac 8 ball is truly, that's an amazing cross. That is really amazing. Cross. I have pictures of it with three inches of snow on it. And we put it back inside and thawed it out. All the dogs survived. Wow. That's, what? That's tough genetics. That's tough, tough genetics. Grown <gasps> in, in Canada for Canada. Yeah, that's right. When you, <laughs> we need stuff like that here. When you're out on the island, so your your weather is completely different than what I have. I'm in the interior, so we're you know we're we're several hours apart. But you being on the island, you have to have you, the winds. We I used to live there. It's the winds are insane up there. <laughs> you know, you have to have those good genetics to to be able to withstand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then nice. after I got into, after I had my five or six basics all in, in bed form, then I started playing around with doing the feminine seed. And, uh, mm. and that's, that's how I ended up with my, my little thing in cookies and my make it all in fem form. Was, uh, was doing the the alien form cookie, was I just got to say, has been one of my favorites so far that I've grown. And I've grown quite a few strains. And the alien cookie, like it was, she was so purple too. She was just, she was really good. <laughs> Thank you, girl. You humble me. Um, actually, I still have some right here. <laughs> I also have the uh, what is the uh, Mac Hellraiser OG Kush. Yeah, yeah, and that Hellraiser, that's that's a pretty nice one too. That, I haven't uh, grown it yet, but it does sound good. Yeah, 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 that's a pretty nice one too. The, the runts, the runts is okay, but it's a really slow grower, right? Typical mm -hmm. for, for runts, and it's got the nice candy flash, and but it's not a great producer, right? But you know, it's a cultivar. If you want to grow something strictly for your own personal, you know, really nice. Yeah. But I mean, if you want to do something where you want to stock up with it a little bit, yeah, it's, it wouldn't be my first choice. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're going for that quality over quantity type thing, yep. then that's yeah, that's a good one to go for. Yep. Yeah. The chats, the chats making funny again, Nick. Sorry. What? <laughs> they said not to die on us. Oh, because I coughed. Thankies. <laughs> you gotta cough to get off, isn't that what they used to say sure. back in the day? Sure. <laughs> that's just what the coughers say. <laughs> so correct me if I'm wrong. Absolutely. Uh did you not have a feminized break? Or something yep. like that. Yep. Yep. STS. Can you maybe tell us about more about that? I sure can. Um, so the spray is done. It's done by uh, made up by a Canadian, right? If you go onto Instagram and you just punch in, I think it's just STS, right? He comes up. He's got his own website and the whole works. Um, what it is is it's. Uh, give me give me a break here if I get the wording wrong. It's silver thin solate. So, so the bare bones basics of it is that a plant needs needs a certain hormone to produce female flowers. What what the spray does is it reduces that hormone that produces the the female flowers. So without that hormone, what the plant now does is it wants it wants to stay alive and still breed. So what it does is it produces male flowers on a female plant. So now that pollen that's coming from those male flowers is feminized. So any seed that you hit it with, whether it be that plant right there, or you take that pollen, because I, I freeze my pollen, I keep it. Um, or you take that pollen and you apply it to another plant, 98% of those seeds will be female. Nice. So wow. Sells that spray really interesting. Buy it in a little spray bottle, right? Um, because I use it quite a bit, I use what they call a breeder pack. So it comes in two dry forms. It comes with an A side and a B side. It's all his his website. You know, it sounds fairly complicated, but really it's not. You start about ten days before it goes in the flower, 
and you'll spray. I figured out right, right away. Don't spray the whole plant. All you need is just a few of the lower branches because it will produce so much pollen. It's absolutely amazing. So you spray wow. it. I wait a couple of days, spray it again, wait a couple more days. Usually, usually four or five applications is enough to turn the plant. And the minute that I could look at the plant and say, okay, I can see male, male starting on the plant, then I'll stop with yeah. the spray. And then I'm kind of anal about doing my breeding and I don't like open pollinations. I like to be totally in control. So I'll have whatever plant that I turn into the plant with the pollen, I'll have that in my, my little two by two tent. And it's got a fan okay. that's pulling air all the time and then the air is being vented out to a different area so I won't have any cross contamination. And then I collect the pollen and then I'll actually take the pollen and use a paintbrush cut all the pops that I wanted it. Cool. Yeah, and you, you can actually, actually touch. I usually flick the brush and let it and, and you can actually take like a, a branch or a couple branches and keep it secluded to just those too, right? Yeah, so you yeah. could have like half of your plant be flower and then the other half you could make it actually produce female seed. Yes, but I was told that you, if you're using, whether it's colloidal silver or thin sulfate, that you shouldn't smoke that weed. Oh, okay. If there's something residual that's in the plant that's not good for you. So oh, I don't do okay. I, I chuck it off. It all just goes into the yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you just, you hit as much of the plant as you can at that yeah, point. Yeah, then. because I'm, I'm about the seed production, so I'm, I'm hitting the yeah. plant hard. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. I guess when I was mm. in production, I only ever had seed once and it was a power outage for two weeks. And I ran 10 sets, I ran portable <laughs> heaters, I did absolutely everything I could do. And I had yeah. 77 plants going to flower on me. And I, I could see the seed. It wasn't it wasn't on the outside. And then mm. it's all dried, it's cured, it's dried, the whole works. It gets put out to the broker, and the broker calls me up right away and says, you know there's a bunch of seed in that flower? I said, oh, there might be a few, but it's not a bunch. She said, no, 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 you got to come back. I go back there, and all I did was just crush a half-pound bag a couple times, and I bet there's 100 seeds in the bottom of it. Wow. Yeah, you can take all this back. Not good for very much anymore. Really good. That's that's funny that you say that too, because I actually just recently grew one that when I trimmed it, there was I couldn't find. I didn't see one seed. As soon as I broke it all up to smoke it, they just started dropping out. I was like, mm -hmm. "What? Where did those come from?" It hasn't got pollinated. It's herbed itself, so it's just yeah. a little banana inside the flower. I never saw it. Yeah, oh. it was just all tucked up in there, nice and tight, and they just yeah. they disappeared. I've had that happen before, so that's interesting. Yes, because any yeah. plant it doesn't it doesn't matter what the plant is. Any plant is more than capable of herbing, right? Because yeah. it can survive. If you take if you take strain out in its flower, strain, right? start taking it and you know, it's one of the things that guys that, that really adamant that they don't want to use colloidal silver or tint. That's what they'll do. They'll take a, a way, way later to purposely get it to flower or purposely get it to hermit. So I had one guy reach out to me and he was kind of wow. pissed off and he's like, you know, auto grow and you say you stand behind your product and all the rest of that. I said, I do. If anybody ever has an issue with my products, right, I, I stand by them. And I said, yeah. what was the issue? And he said, Oh, well, I had a tent and three of your plants hermed in that tent. And I said, oh, yeah, how big was the tent? So it was four by eight. But I said, so did you have other plants in that tent? Oh, yeah. I said, and mine were the only ones that hermed? Oh, no, 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 the whole tent hermed. And I said, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, when, when you have a whole tent, that's not genetics, man. That's environment. Yeah. You're doing something that's separate. Yeah. Whether it's lake leak, whether it's heat, cold, you've done something to it. That's got nothing to do with my genetics, buddy. Yeah. Well, people are so quick to to want to want to accuse and want to have it somebody else's fault. Well, it can't be my fault. I'm doing everything right, so it's got to be the genetics, right? Yeah. Way easier to blame the breeder for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then, hey, how many breeders out there? 
They don't get a, give a potato. Well, right? I think yeah. like I said, I, you got an issue with germination or whatever. Uh, I'm, I'll chip you out packs, right? I'll, I'll make it right, right? But there's a lot of yeah. guys out there. They can tear it ass. If you call them up and say you have issues with packs, too bad, so sad. Right? Yeah. And, and what we all know is, is experienced growers, a lot of the new growers, right? It's nothing to do with their genetics. They drown yeah. in the heat, right? Because what's every new grower do, right? Way too much water. Way, way oh, water. every time. Yeah. And you know what? I did it. <coughs> I still do it occasionally. I've got that yep. Mac one that I'm growing right now. It's the most finicky little son of a bitch, right? She doesn't like wet feet. She doesn't like dry feet, right? She likes a good dry back, but not too much. She doesn't like. <laughs> doesn't like the it doesn't like light nits. You know, like it, it's just every time I've run it, it's been a, but you know what? I get a little better every time. I learn a little bit more every time. And then yeah, and you got your notes to go back to, so you always oh yeah, have oh yeah. And, and every the detail. Cocoa, I've had issues with the cocoa, right? And then Ooh. I've been oh I, I've always grown cocoa and soft pots. But this last mm -hmm. round that I did, I had all sorts of issues, salts and, and the EC in the in the in the cocoa was pretty high. It was up like 3.5. That's way, way high. So I reached out to one of my one of my guys at Canna and said, like, tell me what the issue is here. And he's yeah, and the first thing he said is, Are you growing with soft pots? I said, Yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. He said, Well, he said, soft pots actually draw the salts out they actually hold on to the salts and he said it's very hard to flush a soft pot out and get the salts out of it said, oh but in commercial operations you will never do soft pots they're all rigid yeah. pots because you need to make sense right the whole thing about cocoa is you can't overwater it well that's not true you can but you have yeah it's a lot it's gotta be a lot, a lot yeah. of water. Well, and that, that makes sense. Right and now you see that that ring around the the fabric pots, mm -hmm. that yeah. white ring. When people are growing with salts and stuff like that, you always see it. Yeah. That that makes perfect sense now. Yeah. And then and then when those roots get that salt, what do they do? It kills the end of the root. Right. So now that root has to try and regenerate itself. Yeah. But I also asked their tech. I said, I have a, a beautiful EC moisture meter that. Uh, two labs sent out to me, right? They're not really into into sponsorships too much, but I kind of always, you know, give them shout outs and tag them. I've been using their stuff for years. I I love it. That's just you know, yeah. you get what you pay for. You buy cheap, you get cheap. You buy right, like those yeah, I love my lab contents. I love those things. Anybody that's new, don't be playing around with a pen. You got to calibrate and all the rest of it. Spend the 150 bucks and buy one of those crunches. Never have to calibrate. Change the batteries. In. I got one that's about nine years old. So I every now and then I check it just just for the hell of it and put it in. Just the, to see. And it's still spot on. So really? I've, always, I've always been, you know, pretty pro blue lab. So when they came out with that multimeter, I I said that I'd, be, I'd really like to try one of those. And they actually reached out to me and said, you know what, we'll send you one. But the readings I get off of that are very, very high. And then when I talked to the same thing, the guys at Canna said it's very difficult to get a correct medium reading in cocoa. Right? I would notice that if I did, you know, it's two probes you put into the pot. I would notice if I put the probes in three different spots, I would get three readings and they're all like a lot different. Oh, but wow. He there, he said, great for a moisture meter, but he said, if you really want to know what the EC is in the medium, which is you have to do a rinse, right? You know what's going in, and then check what's coming out. Yeah, check your runoff. Yeah. He said, yeah. He said you can you can try and use a medium of the three, but he said, it's it's not good. And then they actually say it, it's a two to one method. You're supposed to take a certain amount of medium out and then add 100 mils of distilled water and just on and on and on and on. Well, oh, wow. Quite, I'm not quite willing to take it that far. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> another, like, anytime anybody's ever had issues and stuff like that, like we were talking about earlier, I always say check the PHE runoff. Yep. Yeah. 
because uh -huh. what's going in might be different than what's coming out. And if it is, then something something else is going on here. Yeah. But see, my instincts, especially especially with uh, when I get high ECs and things, it's to flush, 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 right? And get the and get get it down, right? With cocoa, yeah. You're not supposed to do that. That's a big that's a big taboo. Right? Oh. You never ever want to run just straight water in cocoa. Take the nutrients hmm. down to fifty percent. He said reduce the nutrients down to fifty percent, but he said don't ever flush with just straight water. It, it, oh. it doesn't work the way it's really? supposed to be. Yep. He also told hmm. me not to add perlite to cocoa. Huh. Really? Everybody does. Everybody yeah. does. I was nope. gonna say when I grew in cocoa, I always did. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I got the huh. big fifty mil bag or whatever out there. Yeah. As soon as he, the giant as soon body as the came over and looked at it, he says, Oh, do you add perlite to your cocoa? And I says, Yeah, it helps with the drainage and that. He says, Yeah, it's been tested actually it's not the best thing to use. He said, I could see some lava rock or something like that if that's what you're really after for drainage. He said, Yeah, it's, he said they're they're they were not compatible for some reason. Really? Yeah. And you know these so guys. Could you use like a? Like, could you use like a pumice or something? Yep, lava rock, lava, yeah. uh, hydrostone. Yeah. So I was, I was, anything like that. I was searching my brain for the pumice word. I was just like, not lava rock. There's another word, but I'm like, I'm just gonna sit quietly and just not say anything until I remember it. So thank <laughs> you for that. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about perlite. Um, I don't remember what perlite was made out of, but it's like it doesn't break like, down. Oh, it's something fired like something. It's something that's obsidian, fired. obsidian that's or something. I heard something obsidian. I think something. I don't know what that is. I just watched Jeremy from Build a Soil. He doesn't like. He does not like. He does not like perlite at all. So he's always trashing it. <laughs> End of the day, it's it's what what you like, what works for you. It's like the whole yeah. thing about flushing. Right? I've been watching this whole thing for years and years, right? The, Not the big controversy. Flush, right? You know, the bro science of flushing. Yeah. You know what? I still flush. Right? Look, my mentor, and he was, he's commercial. No, nope, they got yeah. fed nutrients right up to the day they got caught. Right? But me, uh -uh, I always flush. So when you say flush do you mean like for a week you're just doing like 50 percent nutrient okay so it's not that's the only time where i actually go oh so it's straight water then oh okay okay so straight water at the end for for how long like a week for usually a week 10 days okay and then i'll also give 48 hours darkness before the chop oh and, I, yep. and I'll run the room as cold as I can get it. Oh. And mm. you know, a lot of guys say, "Oh, you know, same thing. It's all bro science. It doesn't. It doesn't increase the. It doesn't increase the the turps yep. or anything." But I had I had six trimmers doing a round. The next round that they did, I changed it up and I added that cold and I added the forty eight hours of darkness. And we yeah. virtually, and it was the same strength. And we virtually went through twice the amount of gloves we did the previous round. And they all commented on it right away. What's so different? Why is this stuff so sticky, much more sticky this time around? And I said, the darkness. Really? Yeah. Oh. So you yeah. chop, you, so do you chop whole plant and then let it hang? Nope. From nope. Uh, it, it depended when I was in the commercial. When I was doing oh, it, okay, yeah. it would all come down and it would go right it would go right through a machine, right? A big commercial machine. Now what when it's small, yeah, I'll hang the whole plant. I'll hang the branches up individually, right? Dry for a week, ten days. And then do my do my dry trim and then it all goes into buckets. Right. Oh, okay. You know, okay. There's 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 what'll make them break the smoke, right? You know Close to the camera. Grow it. Right? No, 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 nothing in the world is is gonna. If, nine times out of ten, if your weed doesn't burn, it's got nothing to do with nutrients or anything else. It's it's not dried properly. It's not cured. Oh, Everybody okay. Wants to smoke it too fast, right? Yeah. 
Now, what do you think about those machines? We've got all the gadgets and the machines for drawing, like the the herbs now and the can of troll. What's what's your take on all the gadgets for that? I don't know any of the machines. You're adding heat, yeah. and I'm I, I'm I'm slow and right. I'm sixty degrees and sixty percent humidity. Sixty, it's sixty. Slow yeah. is the way to go. Anytime you're adding any heat whatsoever, right? You're uh, you're you're taking the potency down. Okay. You know, just myself, right? Yeah. And how much of a hurry are you in? Right. <laughs> like, <would> right. Say, <laughs> <laughs> I like to take my time. There's a, right? There's nothing for me. There's nothing better than being able to pull out a jar of something that's six months or a year old, right? You know, that, that, that's yeah. where you get into a really that top of the line smoke, right? Yeah. Because what it's like after a month of cure and what it's like after three months of cure can be apples and oranges. See, I've never gotten that far. I've never been able to have that much of a stash behind me that. <laughs> I, th I think I got that. a one month cure. Yeah, I got a one month <laughs> cure, and that was that was as close as I got. I'm like, oh, this is delicious! And then all my grown children came down and went, "Yeah, mom, thanks," and took it all from me. <laughs> <laughs> I actually found a quarter pound of of my original eight ball Kush, and it was Ooh. and it was in one of those Grove bags. One of those Grove oh yeah bags. Yeah, yep. and, okay. and without a word of a lie, it was a year old. I, I forgot oh, about wow. it. I actually stashed it in a spot that I didn't. Yeah, that's, that's, yes. that's one of them right there. And I cracked it. And <laughs> yep, and I cracked it. And a year, a year old, it was as good as the day I put it in there. Now, that's crazy, eh? That stuff, well, it was stuffed and it was a nice solid block and it was vacuum packed. But yeah, and that's the best that smoke's ever been. So you well, vacuum awesome. packed it, so you didn't just zip it. You you actually no, vacuum I, sealed I, it. I zipped it and then I vacuum sealed okay. it. Right? Okay. Okay. All the air. Yeah. All the air yeah. But yeah, I love those growth bags. Love yeah, they're bags. great. They are great. I mean, the jars are have always been a tried true method, but those growth bags are definitely uh, See, the jars. Yeah, they're great. Empty. I'm sad. Oh, I'm sad, Mama. It's all in five gallon buckets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd have a room full of those jars. Yeah. I, yeah. Use, I use the five gallon buckets that have those gamma legs on them. Right? Those oh, yeah. 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 Because yeah. 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 right? yeah, right. they have, they actually have the rubber yep. seal around the top where they clip yep. on and then they have the twist off. Yeah. Those are, those are cool. I've actually yeah. thought about getting those the... for my outdoor stuff. Oh, I did. I thought when I started growing, I was going to have so much weed that I prepared. I had five gallon buckets. I stored five gallon buckets because I thought, oh, I'm going to need it for all the weed that I'm going to be growing. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think it ever had a bucket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny outdoor that's that's i mean that's that's where it always comes in for me i don't grow a lot indoor i always grow indoor i always have something going indoor but i always try to keep my indoor is like my my quality that's where i want my quality my outdoor is more of a, a hobby because i know i may not get to the end i may not get to finish it it may end up with bud rot on it it might end up with who knows what so I yeah. use my outdoor plants well, to just kind of like beat them up and learn from. And then I use my indoor as like my, my quality. I'm so well, I, sh I showed this earlier. Now I, I'm not going to say that this is your genetic because that would just be rude to say this, but my grandson was out <laughs> to attack this thing last summer. This is the whole plant. This is the whole plant, whole plant. <laughs> <laughs> so I had I had it outside. It was in a beautiful 10 gallon organic pot. There was worms. It was beautiful. My grandson wanted to murder this poor thing. And he did. The poor thing as soon as like knocked it, knocked the pot over about four or five times. And I'm like, I am not posting about this ever again. Like, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> I'm never gonna name the breeder on this. This is terrible. Like, I'm so sorry. But like it was all, it was just my grandson 
Biden's murder plan. He just wanted to, because yeah. he got a big reaction. All of a sudden, <gasps> the whole house freaked out because he knocked this over. <laughs> hilarious. So we're, this is this is my joke. We're just not gonna. We're not gonna. We're not gonna do that anymore. <laughs> I got big plans for this summer. <laughs> I like to post everything: the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. Right? Like, oh, nobody wanted to see this. What, this was just murder. <laughs> so many guys will cherry pick what they show you. Yeah. Right? You only you only see certain little aspects of things. Right? They don't, they don't they never show you the bad side of things. Right? Exactly. Yeah. The bad side of things. Like, well, it's kind of nice to see the bad. It says, I've never had any bugs and I've never had any pottery melted and I've never had any issues whatsoever. Okay, so Ooh, you've been nice. going for what, three days? Right? Oh. You've, been <laughs> time, and you've had all those issues, right? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I just battled thrips badly yes. um, oh, like hey, three times okay. three times in a row i battled them like it was like last spring and then once in between and then one more and it was just like okay you know what i'm shutting down i am disinfecting the room from top to bottom i'm going it's through like an industrial works. steamer <laughs> you ever had root aphids um root aphids. i don't think so everybody thinks that they're fungus gnats when they first show up but root aphids, oh. root aphids are probably the absolute worst thing you could ever get in a cannabis plant. Right? Really? They're really? Roots, right? And, and eventually they will actually kill off the plant, but they'll totally screw up your grow. They'll slow down production. <gasps> Most commercial places, if they have a bad root aphid investigation, will shut the show down and will do a restart. And strip it really? off. Really? That's how bad it is. I've only ever had them once. Knock on wood, I never have them again. <laughs> and it yeah. took a month of absolute thorough every day. Right? And it was everything I did was all organic, but man, it was it was a tough one to get rid of. Tough one. Well, you said you said that they look like root root aphe, or they so they look like fungus gnats, but they're yeah, but they're not. Like like you can you tell the difference? Uh, if you look at the body and the wing size, they're all different. If you go online and you and ask for a picture of a fungus gnat, and then ask for a picture of a fungus gnat, you can see that they're different. Right? Because people mm. have seen root aphids too much. Right? And like I said, I, I when I start, I reach out to my mentor, and he goes, "Oh yeah, I remember those. We used to use some pretty heavy duty stuff for that." And I'm going, "Oh no, 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 I'm not going there." <laughs> well, the name of a guy. It. So yeah. then he said, Oh, yeah, you got to buy this Botanic Care WP something. It's a, it's a powder. Of course, you can't buy it in Canada. Or you, have a, of course. you have a pesticide license. And then when I found yeah. it, it's all organic. It's, a, it's, it's approved by Health Canada. Right? They make it just almost impossible to get. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. I, I reached out to a buddy of mine in the States. He says, no problem. He says, I'm going to buy that in the corner store. I'll send you up a package. <laughs> yeah, I, picked up a, I picked that up at Lowe's last, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible, the restrictions up here. I mean, uh, the poor guys over the, uh, the stash, they're trying to get their stuff stash. licensed up here. Like, you know, it's it's terrible. Uh, the, the, what, was the, what was the plant therapy? Uh, Lost Coast plant therapy. Lost Coast, yeah. Oh, I love Lost that stuff. I, uh, mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you can't get it in Canada. So uh, I'm talking to a buddy of mine, and he and he says, uh, he says, you know, and he says, uh, I know a guy that used to work there, right? He says, I have the recipe for it. It's not rocket science. So I actually make it up myself now. And the minute that they found out that I was making it here in Canada, they are not impressed with me, right? And I said, <laughs> you know, I'm just a small guy. I might sell ten bottles of this stuff a month. And I said, yeah. you guys can't even ship it up. You can't get it across the border. So what are you getting so wild about? Oh, yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were not very happy with me. Well, once you <laughs> get it across the border, then we'll talk. You yeah. know, but until yeah. then, well, you know. Now, now they can't get it across the border. Supposedly it cost them a hundred grand to get Health Canada to finally approve it. So they do. Wow. I think if you know, I sell it on the website, I don't ship it anywhere other than Canada. I would think if I pushed it. That it would probably mm -hmm. mm. yeah. 
Okay, like we'll, we'll, when Milo grows lost. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk because I've I've been trying to get my hands on some Lost Coast for quite some time. So we'll okay. we'll we'll talk after this. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, Alicia wants to know Alicia, what the signs yeah. of of thrips are, and when I noticed thrips, I just had these little tiny like not chew marks in the leaves or anything like that. They were just like they were like a, a white maybe a, a with a tinge of yellow maybe dots i'm looking around i'm like what is that so i had one of those um uh those plant apps that tells you what's wrong with the plant yep, so yep. I, 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 grabbed like that. That. I took a picture of it because i had no idea what this was and I'm, I'm thinking it's not that serious it's just something stupid maybe i splashed the leaves with some nutrients or something like that and there's just a couple yeah. spots you know that's what i'm thinking at the time it's nature and something I, sometimes things but happen. i took a picture of it and then it came back and it said thrips and i'm like no way so then i, I pick i, I kind of take a leaf off and i'm looking at it really closely and you can actually see these little tiny mm -hmm. they're almost like little tiny white yep. specks yep. that were just kind of moving and they're quick little fuckers too so that's that's the signs that i saw and I thought I caught it early, but nope, I did not. I think by the time you notice it, I think it's already heavier than, than what you would think. Not too late, but heavier than what you would actually think it is yeah. when you finally actually see it. So now, Milo, what's your what's your what's your protocol when you walk into the grow? Like I know when I walk in, because I I run multiple tents. And I have a, I have a system. I start with the youngest and I go to the oldest and that's just the easiest way for me. So then that way I know that if all of a sudden this one has a, has a problem, then I know, and these ones don't, I know where it came from. I can, I can narrow it down and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a protocol like that with, with yeah. your grow or are you just. Step routine, do it the same way all the time. Right, that way you don't miss things, right? Yeah. And then, uh, right, I I always I always pH and I check the ppm every day before anything every gets fed. I've been in so many different grows where I've watched somebody and they're and I could go to feed and I said, "You're gonna check that? Oh no, no, it's okay." Spend the extra minute to check it, yeah. right? Because you know what? Yeah. One time when it's not okay. It's going to cause you a whole bunch of issues, right? Exactly. Yeah. What's what's that, what's that saying that it's, it's not if if you're going to get bugs, it's when you're going to get bugs. Yeah, you know, exactly. like yeah. it's going to it's it's not happen. If it's when. I got a bad bag of pro mix, and I got some weird shit growing in that, and it was it's not pro mix fault. It was a frozen block of ice that I had to get from the farm store because all my yeah. grow stores closed down on me and it was stored improperly. And it was literally, we had to chip it away with a with an ice pick <laughs> to get it off. It has a lot thing. to do with the storage of it. And actually yeah. the people at my grow store were telling me that because I had the same issue one time. I, I, oh, maybe they were... oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. There's bugs in HP mix. They used to sterilize For it sure. and it won't anymore because it's, cheap. it's not cost effective. That's mm -hmm. the one of the things I love about cocoa is it's sterilized. Right? There yeah. is no bugs in cocoa. And do you do a on your cocoa when you first when you first go to use it? Like if it's brand new cocoa, do you do you put that in like a strainer or something like that? And no, no, it? but I hit no? with it the first time it gets Blood water, it's it hit with a double a double dose of Calmeg. Okay. Mm. Because cocoa doesn't hold calcium magnesium, right? So I'll yeah. give it a double dose, right? Just to get everything going. Okay. And the seedlings, on, on seedlings and cocoa, I'm super careful with my watering because you can overwater them so easy in cocoa because cocoa wants to hold that water, right? So, yeah, I, I'm using an eyedropper, right? You yeah. Know, normally, if it's, if it's anything else, I'm using I'm using a I'm using a small syringe or something like that. But yeah, when it's cocoa, yeah, yeah it's an eyedropper and it's like five drops, six drops. Yeah. Oh wow. wow. So you know, hey, some of the genetics that I've chased over the years, you know, yeah. they're two hundred bucks a pack, two hundred and fifty bucks a pack, right? So mm -hmm. you know, you want to be paying attention. I, I have one bad pack from Capitan, a pack of Mac B2s. And you know, and it's not it's not his fault. 
right? And that's and I'm thinking I'm hoping it wasn't mine, but I only ended up with two out of a pack of twelve, and I was kind of a little disgruntled. You know, it cost me mm. two hundred bucks the rest of that pack. So I reached out to Capitator himself because I'm a member of the Bean Basement, and I said, "Has there been any issues with your B2?" And he goes, "No." What was the issue? So I told him, and then he said, "Okay, what was your what's your germination? What do you do?" And I said, "Well, I soak music for 24 hours, maybe 48. You no know, water, a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, and I like the folded napkin in a Ziploc bag, right? Little humidity tent. No, no." I don't use heat maps or anything like that as a rule. Yeah. And he goes, well, where did you get them from? And I said, well, he's only got a few licensed guys in the state that actually are, property, or, are legal to carry his gear, authorized through him, I guess. And I told him, and he goes, no problem, I'll reach out. And I reached out to the company, and I figured, well, you know, I'm, I'm getting something in the I'm also order something else. So uh, when the order showed up, there was two packs of Mac V2 there. So he didn't just replace it with the one, he replaced it with two. So I oh, I, nice. I donated yeah. the one pack because I, I never thought it was coming. And then the second pack, my my uh, Milo's Alien Cookies, it's hunted from those V2s. That was the mother of those Milo Milo's Alien Cookies. Because it was oh. hunted out of that pack. And I actually yeah. put a few pictures up on website and even capitator said yeah it started there my little girl right (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome um we are coming up to the hour so if you want to kind of if you want to run through and kind of tell everybody where they can find you websites instagrams youtubes anywhere that they can find you okay um anywhere they can buy your your seeds, stuff like that. Yep. <laughs> Where's my camera? <laughs> Everybody gets into the awkward, weird position. Yeah. <laughs> so all the genetics and all the swag are on the website. So it's uh, www.milogrow.ca and the Milo dog with a Y. Or you can... Uh, you can message me on Instagram at MiloGrow2020. Perfect. And you were very responsive. And I apologize. I haven't been. I've been. I've been wrapped up in home stuff, oh, video no games, no the last couple of weeks or last week or so. So I haven't been on Instagram. I've been. I've been cheating and. <laughs> so I haven't. I haven't been very social. I know I was going to come back and I was going to go, oh, well, you know, we, you know, life's been doing the thing and now and they, he, Papa sold us out. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. There Look at that. Where's the, um, is there a, a that picture of you in the grow room? Is that on here? Can we going to see that? Probably not. I'm just wishing for things. <laughs> And you are a you are in Canada, so oh, yeah. this is yeah. So anybody in Canada, usually we, usually we're we're snuffed out of most things. So it's kind of nice that uh, that this is all Canadian and they can ship real quick. Oh, look at that! Yeah, one. great thing. No issues shipping in oh. Canada because American customs and Canada customs are yeah. grabbing orders left and right as we speak. I've just <gasps> lost two coming from the States and I've just lost three that I sent down to the States. So they are actively looking to grab packs now. Oh, shoot. Yeah. <gasps> that sucks. Oh, see, it goes I'm in waves. Really I've like, heard wow. they're, all of a sudden they're like, okay, we're, this is what we're focusing on this week. And then, yeah. you know, I've, I've found on a couple of my websites and I'm not the only one. They've been grabbing guys like crazy. So, well, you know, everybody's getting ready for <clears throat> for their outdoor, right? So yeah, this is the yeah. season where everybody's yeah. starting to prep. Oh my goodness! I'm so glad I got my uh, my my gauntlet seeds in today. I'm in this growers grow off thing for, with with seedsmen, so I just got them in today. So I'm super excited. About that. Oh, so especially now that you said yeah. that, I'm like, oh, woo! <laughs> yeah, came under the line. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not cool. No. <laughs> no, that's not cool at all. 
So but, those you know, sweat, the swag, the t-shirts, I've got those t-shirts for uh, 30 bucks for the t-shirts, 40 for the long sleeve and 60 for the hoodies. And they're and all listen, uh, this is such a beautiful yeah, they're all good quality stuff. It's all from oh. Vista Print. I love their stuff. Love their oh, stuff. So good. So good. Nice, uh, that's, that's where I got my mama Kush pillow from was was Vista Print. I really, Print. Uh, really like that company. <laughs> really like that company. Nice. Nice. So, yeah, no, look, yeah. honestly, like all, all your genetics and everything like that on the website, yeah. they're all affordable prices. They're not like some of these places you see, they're $1,200 for a pack of seeds. Yeah. Yeah. And no, they, no, everything is very, very affordable. Not, not and, yeah. Yeah, very and to be able to have that's access awesome. with to the breeder like that is just that's worth a million dollars right there. To be able to have Absolutely. that access and to be able to ask questions you know yep. hey is it normal yep that's totally normal or whatever or um, I am i water you know, on yeah. Facebook sites and, and yeah I, I tell everybody that's involved in them reach out ask me right i'll, yep. I'll tell you or i'll give a little spill at the very beginning saying the results of this strain are right and then let them take it from there i wish everybody did that that's a good <laughs> i like that <laughs> The do's and the don'ts of this strain. I like that. That's a great yeah. idea. Yes. There you go, breeders. Take a page out of Milo's book. The do's yep. and don'ts. <laughs> awesome. Well, sure. we appreciate you coming on. It was a pleasure well, to meet you. Thank you very much for having me on. It was great seeing everybody. It was great meeting you. Yes, of course. Oh, I'm yes. so glad. So nice be able to chat with you and please come back for grow me gardens on Fridays. You know, I'm always bugging you to come and come and uh, hang out with us show on Fridays, grow. but yep. Come show your grow nine o'clock on, uh, on Fridays on YouTube, but six we also do a campfire six o'clock our time. Yes. Yeah, six o'clock yes. our time. <laughs> but we also do a campfire at the end where if you don't want to be in your grow and you just want to come hang out and talk, it's open forum. Cool. Yeah. Well, and it's cannabis talk, it's whatever right? talk. It's just everybody getting yeah. to know people from the community and just hanging out and shooting the shit. Yep. Yeah. So right. Yeah. Hanging around the campfire. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. We really appreciate it. It was fantastic meeting you once again. And uh we'll have to do this again soon. Yes. Have a good night, everyone. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. <clears throat> oh my what a goodness. Great show. He's a cool dude. <gasps> I the do's and don'ts. That's my favorite part right there. The do's and don'ts of this strain. Yeah. And so Beautiful. easy to get a hold of. I've asked him many questions, not even of just his strain, but of just growing in general. And he's always been yeah. very helpful for sure. Yeah. Yeah. If well, you're not, you if talk you're about, not following him, do yourself a favor and follow him. He's he's a real grow man. Well, legacy yeah. growers. When you got people that have been growing for 50 mm -hmm. plus years. Yeah, that's, that's legacy in my eyes. I'm I'm surprised about the the darkness that uh, the 48 hours of darkness that that really that one really threw me for a loop. I didn't realize he uh, he subscribed to that, but he says he noticed a difference. So that's you know, it's telling you something right there. And and honestly, I'm not going to dive into that topic because that that's a that's a controversial that one, but. Mm -hmm. You ask 10 people and you're going to get a 50 50 answer. Yep. You're going to get five people that maybe say they notice a difference and five people that say they don't. So maybe, maybe, maybe we'll do like a, a special campfire session where it's just a debate back and forth, hanging around the campfire, debating that. Hmm. Yep. I don't know. What do and you guys I think? I don't begrudge anybody for, you know, if they do something that, in their mind works for them hey if it works for them it works <laughs> then yeah by all means fucking go for it for that's sure. so if cool that's, if that's your I process just... go for it because yeah who am i to say it doesn't work might not right? work for me but not it might for work. You. <laughs> exactly exactly oh we forgot to shout out papa we did not shout out papa see he had to make himself That is so perfect. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you, Papa. You're doing no, that was thing. that was Papa. Like, oh, that was yesterday. Ago. Oh, that was yesterday. <laughs> I was trying to be nice like six months ago. But... Fucking donkey. <laughs> That was this afternoon. <laughs> That's funny. I made him, I made him so, go to the beer store for me. He didn't like it. <laughs> fucking donkeys. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. All right, let's it's wrap. Friday. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> Friday, we got Grow Me Gardens. So come show you grow. Yeah. Hang out at the fire. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Friday. I can't wait. It's been a week already. I can't wait till Friday. <laughs> I know. One more day. You got to get through one more day. And then it's Friday. Oh, so Thursday is our real hump day. Oh, Thursday yeah. is our real hump day. Yeah. Mm. Wednesday's the teaser hump. Yeah. Thursday's the real hump. See, day. that's why I get that's why my weeks are all messed up. Yeah. Makes sense. We've been right looking there. at this wrong the whole time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because you just got to change your perspective a little bit and things start coming Happy together. Happy hot day on Thursdays and everybody's going to go, <laughs> what is wrong with this lady? <laughs> but there's 52 people in this room right now that will understand where you're coming from now. So... Oh my goodness. I'm going to do it on Instagram. I'm going to do it on a third. Uh, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow's Thursday. Tomorrow's hump day. Yeah. Tomorrow. Oh, yes. Tomorrow will be hump day. I will yep. make it hump day and we'll see how many people catch on. <laughs> Thursday is the HGTC hump day. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're getting out of control now. Let's, let's wrap yeah. this up and we will continue this on Friday. Yes. Thank you all for joining. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a thank you, night. Milo. Milo. I'm going to hang out. Thank you. Yes. Amazing. Thank you so Absolutely much. Amazing. Get some stash, <laughs> blend. Feed my kids. <laughs>